Hey Martin the Guitar Guy here. I wanted to show you some really cool stuff that I have particularly have found that I can do, I guess, really well because I play a lot of solo guitar and I do a lot of gigs with just voice and guitar. Um, and so what I've got to become is basically the whole band but on a guitar. And there's lots of people out there that do some really cool stuff about this. I'm just going to show you my way and how I do it and where I've, where I've come about, uh, how I've come about doing this. So to give an example, what I just did then is another is an example of that. I'm just doing some simple chords. Uh, basically, it was a little funky blues in E, and it's got an A7 and a B7 in it. And I was doing some stuff. I'd, if, I wrote, if I tabbed this out for you, it would be really boring, but it would be like... Which is still cool. And that's definitely where I'd start, if it's like learning the piece. You do an E7 with a down-up strumming, to an A7 and a B7, or something like that, and you do a variation of that. Um, but when I'm doing something solo in a solo gig, I like to have that feel of a drummer playing along and that feel of um, everyone's head bobbing to the music. And that's something I've gotten really good at. So let's show you how to do that. To start with, you need to have a pick at this stage because it's just going to give you more um, aggression with the strings and you're not going to damage the, the hell out of your fingers. It's the best way to do it is with a pick. And you need to have good right hand strumming technique. So please go check out my other videos or go to jamarama.com and just get the real deal on everything I'm doing right now. Otherwise, you need to look at your right hand technique being nice and loose and tick-tock, tick-tocky, which is my famous stuff that I keep talking about, the tick-tocky stuff, the, the continuous strumming. So that continuous strumming is happening all the time and I'm doing stuff within the chords. I'll show you what I mean. So there's lots going on there, there's heaps of percussiveness. The right hand is just, doing, I'll just do the right hand. That is what I'm going to show you today, and that's what's the most important part. It's the right hand strumming technique, and it's the accenting of the notes and the ghost notes as well. So the dynamics that's happening. So when I say dynamics, there's some beats that are strong, that are mm, what real, really mm, 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 duck. You can hear that duck noise, like a drummer. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the drummer. That's basically, sounds geeky doesn't it, but that's basically what I'm doing with the right hand. So when I do that, I'm going top, bottom, top, bottom with a funky strum. I'm going, what I mean by top, bottom, top of the strings, so the bassy strings for the kick drum, and for the higher strings, or for the snare, and I'm using a lot of the wood of the guitar as well. And you hear that da, 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 da is the accents I've got going on. I'm continually strumming. So that's quite a funky groove to do, but if you can just start by doing that, put your fingers over the strings, top, bottom, top, and top, bottom, top, bottom, top, and bottom. And I'm working my way between the two, and that gives me all the different flavors and nuances that are happening within that strum. That's where to start. So just start by doing that. I'm really holding the pick lightly, feathery, except for the accents, for the strong bits. I'm, I'm forcing my, my hand towards the guitar and down onto the strings to make a nice percussive sound. And then very feathery for the notes in between. Hear those little notes that are happening, those little wee strums that are happening, really integral. There is a big difference between those. If it's a subtle difference, it won't be such a cool sounding groove, but if there's a great difference between the strong beats and the weak beats, so the weak beats are almost nothing. But when you first start this, when you have a go at this for the very first time, don't be surprised if there's not much difference between your strong beats and your weak beats. That's very normal. So when you're strumming, first doing this for it, don't be too hard on yourself. It's very easy, take the pressure off. Just try and get it. And you might just want to start with the downbeat. Chuck it, 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 chuck it. Even that, getting the difference between the strong beat and all the little beats, to is really important. So that's where I want you to start with this sort of stuff before you start going into the chord progression, actual part of it. So that's lesson one. Get that down. 
when you've got that nailed and it's subconscious, it's programmed, you got and you've got some groove with just with fingers on the strings, and you can feel that that drumming groove. That's when you're ready to add some chords to it. So you can add some just one chord and just do it over and over. So what I'm doing there, I'm actually doing the E7 chord and I'm stopping it every now and again in between to, to add some space. Because funky music uh, isn't filled with music, it's groove and it's all about the groove so there's no need for a lot of notes. You can actually take a lot of notes out of it. It's all about the feel of the percussiveness of it with a little bit of nice interjected notes in, here and there with the chords. Like. Even that can sound quite fun which is just short notes, with short chords. So I'm putting pressure on the chord, then I'm stopping it as soon as I can with the left hand. So even that's going to take a bit of work, but man, it sounds awesome when you combine that. It just sounds cool. It's just a three chord, bluesy, funky groove, but it's just something about that that makes everyone in the place bob their head and go, yeah, we're with you. And also, if you're playing in a band, it's super helpful. I still play this way in a band. Even though the drum groove's taken care of and the bass groove's taken care of, there's something about being able to lock into what they're doing when I'm playing as well. And it makes the whole unification of the three members or five members or however big the band is, really lock in. Everyone's just able to look at each other and feel in time with each other. So it's imperative for your playing as by yourself as well as with the band. So quite a big lesson there and this is quite advanced stuff, however it's so much fun to do and anyone can do this but it's just a matter of persevering with that right hand and then getting that drum groove out. So if you like the way I'm teaching and you like my style of teaching, there's uh, very possible that you and I could have a bit of an interaction. I think if you want to go to jamarama.com, you can check out all my stuff on Jamarama and also um, get interaction with me personally. And if that's the case, I'd love to hear from you soon. And it's great talking to you. Let's see you again soon.